this is the Transformative Play Initiative, and we're going to talk today about the mixing desk of EduLARP. So the mixing desk of EduLARP was originally developed for a workshop at the EduLARP Conference 2018 in Malmö, Sweden. And this was based on the mixing desk of LARP, which is a useful tool for LARP design that includes these mixing desk faders, uh, kind of like in a sound booth when you're mixing audio, that evaluate uh, for the designers how they would like to integrate specific elements into their design. It was originally developed for the LARP Writers Summer School in 2012 by a, a mixed team uh, from many countries, from Fantasy Verbundet, the Education Center Post, and Livewerkstaden. And uh, Martin Nielsen and Martin Eckhoff Anderson wrote the accompanying article in Crossing Habitual Borders, which is a book for Knutpunkt 2013. And Anderson also gave a Nordic LARP talk in 2013 on the mixing desk. And the goal of this specific workshop that I created was to get groups together to use a similar tool uh, that would be useful in EduLARP design. And EduLARP design has unique considerations. So some of the faders on the mixing desk of EduLARP. So the first is, uh, is this performative and behavioral or is it more introspective or reflective? In other words, are you expecting the players to be acting a lot outwardly or are you expecting them to have an internal experience? The next is, is this more of a cognitive activity or is this more of an affective activity? Meaning, are you expecting them to engage in a lot of um, processes that require high le higher level thinking? Are you trying to have an emotional experience? And that's the primary mode of interaction. Now, notice that these are faders, so it's not either or necessarily, but it's how much do you want to dial up one particular element versus another? Are you introducing new subject matter or are you doing subject matter revision? This is very important because if you are introducing new subject matter into an existing um, game, then it can be actually quite difficult to learn. And if there's a lot of other highly stimulating things going on in that game. So, you know, considering when you're gonna introduce subject matter and uh, how you're going to reinforce it is important. Is there a thin character or role or is there complex characterization? Meaning is the player playing someone very similar to themselves? Or are they playing a very complex character that has multiple things they must keep in mind as they're playing and is quite different from who they are? Is it social play or individual play? Meaning, are you designing for a group or are you de designing for individuals to have a certain kind of experience? And is it mostly a competitive game or mostly a cooperative game? that will definitely impact the players and how they make choices in the game. Other faders include, is there creativity of expression? Meaning, do characters get to basically invent the world as they like? Do they have a lot of agency? Or do they have pre-designed tasks that they must engage in? Are there many perspectives that are available during this LARP or are you focusing on establishing one primary perspective that you would like to guide the players to see through? Are there measurable goals that must be attained or is there some sort of freedom of exploration that the players can engage in? Is there one specific subject that you want to emphasize being taught or is it interdisciplinary? Meaning there are a lot of different uh, disciplines and even skills that are being trained. Is there one specific task or modality? Or are there multiple skills and knowledges that are being trained at the same time? Are there leadership opportunities? Meaning uh, individuals can um, lead the group? Or is there an equality of player status and character status within the group. So some more considerations are, are they learning hard skills or soft skills? Soft skills generally refers to um, 
what we call people skills. Um, and in general, these are not things that you learn, for example, in a science class per se, or a math class, you're usually learning hard skills. Like, can you do addition and multiplication? That would be a hard skill. A soft skill is, can you persuade the group to go along with your plan? Cooperation, teamwork, those sorts of things. Is the emphasis on individual interactions or large group interactions? So this is, how do you want your players to actually engage in this LARP? Is there an emphasis on ethics and social issues or on non-social or perhaps more cognitive uh, focus? Now, of course, these things are not necessarily divorced from one another, but it is something to think about um, because if you're asking somebody to engage in a lot of cognitive tasks, but you're actually trying to get them to engage with ethics and a social issue, it might actually run counter to have both of those things happening at the same time. Are there new social dynamics that are going to be established through play? Or are there existing social dynamics that are getting reproduced in play? One of the interesting things about EduLARP is sometimes they can give people the opportunity to engage with each other in ways that they never would have before. Um, for example, you know, somebody who has very little power in a classroom can suddenly be the expert. Um, and or, or certain cliques or social groups might be broken up and instead in play, there are new social dynamics that are being uh, established. Is there an equal degree of participation, meaning everybody's expected to participate at the same level? Or are there variable degrees of participation? Variable degrees of participation can be really helpful, particularly in LARPs uh, where it's, not, it's a mandatory activity and not everybody is, is excited or enthusiastic or confident in playing very intensely. Is there a high cognitive load or a low cognitive load? Meaning, does the player have to spend a lot of time doing complex mental tasks or can they sort of relax uh, a little bit and focus on other kinds of things as they're playing? Other considerations are, is there a high social risk in this situation or is there low social risk? So if you're asking players to engage in an activity that might cause them to be judged off game, that might be something to consider. And that might be worth doing if it, if it adheres to the educational goals that you have, but it also might be too risky um, and actually might go against your design on some level. So that's something to think about. Are there failure conditions or no failure conditions? Meaning, is this a scenario people can win or is this a scenario that is more about just experiencing what's happening or some sort of collaborative play? Does this game require extensive play preparation? Meaning, do they have to do a lot of homework ahead of time? Do they have to you know, memorize a character sheet or rules or do you know, some subject matter revision before they come? Or is there no play preparation? They can just come and play the game. Is there extensive debriefing or little debriefing? And notice here, there's no option for no debriefing because um, for a game to be educational, we really do think that there needs to be some form of reflection happening after the LARP. And that can happen in multiple ways, but generally as a group, it's good to have at least a little bit of debriefing for educational games. Is there status and power in the play or is there character equality? So we talked earlier about player equality. Do the players have an equal amount of agency in the game? This is related to the character's roles that they're playing within the game. Is somebody the king and everybody else is their subjects? That will immediately shift the dynamics in the play, which might be quite important to the learning goals or might work against them. Finally, does it require skilled facilitation? Meaning that the person who is running the LARP needs to, or the tabletop game needs to understand how to run a game, 
and needs to understand a lot of complex mechanics, say, or different setting information, um, how to, to facilitate a large group in this very particular way that is often quite different, for example, than a, a typical classroom lecture. Or is it a very beginner-friendly uh, facilitation, meaning that somebody can pick up the instructions and very easily set up the game and play it? Now, keep in mind that some facilitators may still be very intimidated by this kind of play if they're not used to it, uh, regardless of how easy the instructions are. Uh, but, but certainly the complexity might affect how often this game gets run. So those are just a few considerations. And just like with the mixing desk, you're welcome to add your own. Uh, that are things that you think about when you're designing an EduLARP or uh, an educational tabletop game. Um, for further information, here are some uh, recommended materials. And again, I am Sarah Lynn Bowman at the Department of Game Design at Uppsala University. Thank you.